The Life of Sanji, One Piece, Part 1. Black Leg Sanji, born as Vinspoke Sanji, is the cook of the Straw Hat Pirates. He's the fifth member of the crew and the fourth to join, doing so at the end of the Barati arc. Born as the third son and fourth child of the Vinsmoke family, thus making him a former prince of the Germa Kingdom, he disowned his family twice, once in his youth and again after reuniting with them as an adult. After fleeing the Vinsmokes as a child, he eventually entered the care of Zeph as the sous chef of the Barati, where he would remain until he met Monkey D. Luffy, who convinced him to join his crew. His dream is to find the rumored chef's paradise, All Blue, which is where East Blue, West Blue, North Blue, and South Blue meet, along with their wildlife. He's one of the top three fighters of the Straw Hats alongside Luffy and Zoro. He currently has a bounty of 330 million berries, the third highest in the crew after Luffy and Jinbei. Despite renouncing his surname Vinsmoke, the world government labels it as part of his name on his wanted poster. Welcome to the Imagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Sanji. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Imagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Early Childhood Sanji was born in the North Blue into the Vinsmoke family, the reigning royal family of the Germa Kingdom, along with his three brothers on the same day, with Sanji being the third son of the family, thereby making him the kingdom's third prince. Sanji's father, Vinsmoke Judge, planned to genetically enhance all of them before birth to make them have superhuman abilities and no emotions, and thus turn them into perfect soldiers in the future. His mother, Vinsmoke Sora, was against this practice, and while still being pregnant, she took a drug that would ensure that they would grow as normal humans with emotions. This intent resulted successfully only on Sanji, at the cost of severely weakening her own health beyond recuperation. While Sora was still alive, Sanji once prepared a meal for her. Even though the meal was ruined while Sanji was delivering it to her hospital, it made her smile and she decided that she would only eat what he had made for her, sparking an interest in cooking for Sanji. Vin Smoke Judge revealed to his children at a young age that he had endowed their bodies with genetic enhancements and his plan for Sanji and his four siblings to lead their kingdom's military arm, Germa 6-6, in the future, and began training them to capitalize on their genetic potential. While Sanji's siblings excelled at their exercises and their bodies evolved, Sanji continually lagged behind due to his body remaining human thanks to the drug Sora took prior to his birth. This made him an easy target for his brothers, who bullied him regularly, and Judge didn't intervene due to his disdain for Sanji's weakness. One day, Judge caught him serving food to a rat in his room and shouted that Sanji would need to stop cooking and train even harder if he wanted to catch up with his siblings. He then threw the food and the rat out of the palace, causing Sanji to cry. Sanji continued to be beaten up by his brothers regularly, with his sister Reiju occasionally tending to his injuries. Eventually, Judge became convinced that Sanji would never develop superhuman abilities and decided to erase his son's existence from his future plans by putting an iron mask on him and locking him in a Vinsmoke Castle dungeon. At the same time, he staged a state funeral for his son, informing the onlooking Germa 66 soldiers that Sanji had died in a tragic accident. During the next six months of Sanji's imprisonment, his mask was only removed when receiving meals from the guards. At some point, he read about the All Blue from a cookbook he received. His brothers eventually discovered he was still alive and occasionally visited the dungeon just to continue bullying him. Reiju came to the dungeon to treat her brother's wounds, but told him that she wasn't on his side. After the German Kingdom crossed the Red Line into the East Blue, Sanji declared to Reiju that he wanted to run away and become a chef. Reiju broke open Sanji's cell, allowing him to escape. As Sanji was fleeing, he ran into his father. Judge decided to allow Sanji to go on the condition that he never tell anyone about their relationship. While Germa 66 was attacking the island of Kozia in the East Blue, Reiju directed him to a cruise ship called the Orbit and told him to never come back to the Germa Kingdom. Having escaped the kingdom, Sanji cut all ties with his family and renounced his title as prince. The Dream of Two Fools Two years after he left the Vinsmoke family, a ten-year-old Sanji was working as a ship's cook on the orbit. One day, Red Leg Zeph, a pirate, and his crew attacked the ship. However, both ships were caught in a sudden storm and sank. Zeph managed to save the young Sanji from drowning. Before the storm tore the boats apart, Sanji had cried out his dream to find the All Blue, which was why he was saved by Zeph afterwards. After the storm, the two were washed onto a rock outcropping high above the sea. Despite their good fortune, there was little food for them. A few rations had washed onto the rock with them, but there was no vegetation, no animals, and no way to reach the water to fish. Splitting up what little rations remained, Zeph ordered Sanji to sit at the other end of the island to look for a ship. Sanji protested that Zeph was keeping a large sack for himself, but Zeph brushed him off, saying that as an adult, his stomach was bigger. Days passed and Sanji had no more food, but there was still no sign of a ship. Many weeks afterward, an emaciated Sanji decided to take a chance to kill Zeph for his food. He didn't kill the old man, but when he slashed the old man's sack in a fit of rage, he discovered that there was no food inside, only treasure. 
To his horror, he realized that Zeph had given him all of the rations and had eaten his own leg to survive. Zeph confessed that he often lacked food on the high seas and planned on opening a restaurant on the seas. Sanji, guilty over plotting to kill Zeph, agreed to help, but Zeph remarked that he was too weak. Soon after, a ship appeared, and they were spared from death. Because of this ordeal, Sanji pledged to never refuse food to a starving individual, no matter how evil or poor they may be. Sanji subsequently spent the next nine years working aboard the Baratier as its sous chef, during which time he vastly improved his cooking under Zeph's tutelage while also developing tremendous physical abilities and his signature kick-based martial arts under the latter's guidance. Baratier Arc while doubling as a waiter one day since the rest have jumped ship, Sanji served a particular couple at the Baratier, Marine Lieutenant Fullbody and his lady friend Moody. Though Sanji served them well, his dismissiveness towards Fullbody made the Marine lose face in front of his date and the other customers. Angered, Fullbody dared to pick a fight with Sanji. Sanji, on the other hand, upon seeing Fullbody waste the food prepared for him out of frustration, beat up the Marine. Seeing the mess that Sanji started up, Zeph immediately got into the argument as well. Just as things were going crazy as usual in the Baratier, a new development arrived. The prisoner that Fullbody and his men had captured had escaped and then was demanding food from the restaurant. The starving pirate, however, was denied food from the other chefs and then kicked out of the restaurant. While his fellow chefs denied the pirate food, Sanji, however, gave the starving man food for which he gratefully ate. Luffy, who was witnessing Sanji at this time, was impressed by such a kind act and decided to invite Sanji to join his crew. Despite Luffy's offer, Sanji refused due to his own personal debt to Zeph. After seeing the prisoner Jin off, Sanji went back to work and glanced upon one of Luffy's crew members, Nami. Seeing such a beauty, he declared his willingness to become a pirate as long as he was with her. Though the declaration was mere flirtation, the scene, however, intensified when Zeph butted in. After a brief argument with the two chefs, Sanji continued his flirting with Nami and gave a bad impression to Usopp with his womanizing nature. Two days after the incident with Jin, Sanji and the rest of Baratie witnessed a fearful sight before them. Though wrecked, the ship the Dreadnought Saber came before them. The ship belonged to Don Krieg, the pirate captain that Jin served under. With the knowledge of Baratie being a floating restaurant, Jin brought a starving Don Krieg and his crew before Sanji and the other chefs. As before, all the chefs but Sanji refused to give food to such a dangerous person. However, no sooner had Krieg finished the food that Sanji gave him and regained his strength, the pirate showed his true colors. Demanding food for his men, Sanji complied with Krieg's request. However, because Krieg also demanded the Baratier, Sanji's efforts were hindered by the other chefs. Though Sanji's efforts to give food were hindered, Zeph instead gave the food to Krieg's men. After a lengthy discussion, Sanji and the rest of the chefs of the Baratier prepared for an upcoming battle. Luffy, spurred by the turn of events, decided to join Sanji in defending the restaurant. However, before anything could happen, Don Krieg's ship was suddenly sliced up before the eyes of Sanji and the rest. Finding out that this new turn of events was caused by Mihawk of the Shichibukai, Sanji and the rest then witnessed momentarily a battle between this legend and one of Luffy's crew members, Roanoa Zoro. Though Zoro was skillful, Sanji and the rest witnessed Luffy's companion fall to the Master Swordsman. As the battle ended and they witnessed Luffy's devil fruit powers, Sanji and the rest heard Zoro's vow to Luffy. When that finished, Sanji and the rest were able to concentrate on the battle with Krieg's forces. With his fighting skills learned from Zeph, Sanji was able to defeat a great deal of Krieg's men. One amongst them, however, was different from the rest. Pearl, the so-called Invincible Wall, was significantly stronger than them. Made fiercer by a blunder by Luffy, Pearl provided to be a real threat to Sanji. Despite this, Sanji was still able to hold his own against his tough opponent. Though Sanji was getting the upper hand, in the midst of the battle, a new surprise developed. As Sanji and the others were fighting, Jin snuck up on Zeph and took the old man hostage. With this, Sanji was asked to surrender. He negotiated with Sanji and Don Krieg to let the chefs leave the Baratier. However, Sanji is unable to accept the terms due to the honor debt he felt he owed Zeph for saving his life as a small boy. Sanji refused to let Zeph give up another one of his treasures. Seeing this behavior, the other chefs asked Sanji what he meant by this. As he was being attacked by Pearl, who took the opportunity for some payback, Sanji explained to them that in the past, Zeph sacrificed everything, including his own leg, so that he could live. Sanji explained to them that it was all his obligation to Zeph. With this, Sanji stood still and took all of Pearl's attacks, ready to die for the Baratier. As Sanji was being attacked, however, Luffy did something unexpected. Luffy broke part of the Baratier, much to everyone's surprise. Angered by such sudden action, Sanji asked why. In response, Luffy told him that since the ship was the goal of Krieg and his men, destroying it would be the solution to the problem. Luffy also explained to him that Zeph didn't save Sanji's life so he could throw it away for the ship. As they were talking about all of this, Pearl decided to attack once more. However, before Pearl could strike Sanji and Luffy, Jin suddenly defeated him. Explaining himself to Krieg, Jin stated that he will be the one to finish off Sanji. Told that this was a special honor for the food that he gave Jin, Sanji battled with the pirate. Despite his skill, Sanji was overpowered by Jin due to being hindered from his earlier injuries. 
However, just as Jin was about to land the final blow, Sanji found himself before a supposedly heartless pirate, unable to kill. Because of Sanji's previous kindness, his opponent wasn't able to bring himself to finish the job. While this saved Sanji from being bludgeoned by Jin, it angered Don Krieg. Krieg threw his MH5 bomb at them, and Luffy threw Sanji and Jin two masks to protect themselves from the poison. Luffy also finds a mask for himself at the last second. When the smoke clears, they realize Jin had been poisoned, having thrown Luffy his mask to save him. With this turn of events, Sanji told the other chefs to help the poisoned Jin. As they were helping Jin, Sanji noticed an angered Luffy decide to go against Krieg. He then watched the two fight. As the battle raged, Sanji was told by Zeph to watch Luffy carefully. With every turn of the fight, Sanji was amazed at Luffy's determination against all odds. In the end, Sanji and the others witnessed Luffy do the impossible, break down Don Krieg's famed impenetrable armor. Though this was a deciding blow, Sanji and the others knew that Krieg still had a few tricks. While this didn't deter Luffy from ultimately defeating Don Krieg, the outcome, however, caused the young pirate captain to fall into the water. Seeing this and being told of Luffy's weaknesses, Sanji dove in and rescued Luffy. After a few moments with a slightly less poisoned Jin, Sanji gave the defeated crew of Don Krieg a little boat in which they can use to retreat in. With everything done, Sanji awaited an unconscious Luffy to tell all that happened. Though Sanji still refused to go with Luffy when he woke up, he however shared with Luffy his dream of the All Blue. Leaving the Baratier As Sanji and Luffy then decided to have a well-deserved meal, they came before a surprising incident. Apparently, every chef there thought that Sanji's soup was disgusting. Though this got to Sanji, in truth, they were just making an excuse so that Sanji could go with Luffy and fulfill his dream of finding the All Blue. As Sanji was pondering about all this outside, he noticed a strange sight. The spectacle that crashed into Sanji and into the restaurant was one of Luffy's traveling companions, Yosaku. Due to Nami taking the Going Merry during the battle with Don Krieg, Luffy's crew and traveling companions were forced to part midway through and were thus unable to fully aid Sanji and the rest. With Yosaku back, the bounty hunter asked Luffy to come back with him to the others for an urgent matter. As Luffy decided to accompany him, Sanji finally decided to become Luffy's chef. After a few moments with the other chefs and with himself, Sanji packed his stuff and went to go with Luffy and Yosaku. As he was leaving, Sanji was met with one last surprise. Zeph, a man who usually belittled Sanji one way or another, asked Sanji to take care of himself. Completely moved by this, Sanji fell to his knees crying and thanked Zeph for everything he had done for him. However, he thanked him while insulting them, as he is foul mouthed most of the time. With an emotional baratier behind them, Sanji left with Luffy and Yosaku aboard his small ship, the Shimashima Shopping. Arlong Park Arc while Johnny, Usopp, and Zoro were on their own, Sanji, Luffy, and Yosaku headed to meet up with the rest of the crew. Yosaku told Luffy and Sanji about fish people. Ignoring him, Luffy began doodling what he imagined fish people would look like. To Sanji's amusement, and what Nami would look like if she were a mermaid, though all he did was draw hair on his horrendous sketch, causing Sanji to demand Luffy to destroy it. Sanji then cooked lunch for the crew. They were then interrupted by the arrival of Momu, a Grand Line beast who was looking for food. Keeping to his oath, Sanji attempted to feed Momu, but then swiftly kicked him when Momu attempted to eat his hand. Using Momu to lead their boat forward toward Arlong Park, the three of them were flung right into Zoro. Johnny found them shortly after, claiming to have seen Usopp get stabbed to death by Nami. Before he and Yosaku left, Nami showed up and Sanji greeted her in an ecstatic manner, something that he does quite a bit. This causes Zoro to insult him, something that Zoro does quite a bit. But Sanji retaliated that love is a hurricane. Nami then confirmed the facts of Usopp's death, which caused Zoro to attack her and Sanji to defend her. Still actually alive, Usopp ran to meet up with the gang. Luffy slept and Zoro commented on his own views of Nami, which made Sanji become enraged and the two prepared to fight, only to have Usopp's face come between the impact. Nojiko appeared, and after Sanji claimed that she had to be Nami's sister because they were both so beautiful, she decided to tell the crew about Nami's past and make sure that they don't make things worse for her. Though only Sanji and Usopp agreed to listen. Once Nami broke down after Arlong's betrayal and asked Luffy to help, Sanji, Usopp, and Zoro joined him on the march to Arlong Park. Hachi summoned Momu once again to attack the pirates. However, Sanji and the pirates were unimpressed as they had already fought Momu. Luffy grabbed Momu and spun his body at the rest of the Arlong pirates, knocking most of them out. Luffy found his feet stuck in the cement due to the blow and was defenseless. The fishmen threw a boulder at Luffy and Sanji shattered it with a kick to protect his friend. The Straw Hat Pirates each squared off against one of Arlong's officers. After Usopp began his fearful run from Chu, Sanji became distracted watching Zoro fight Hachi and took a powerful punch from Kurobi and blown from the impact through a wall many yards away. Sanji got back up after Zoro's fight was done, claiming that Kurobi's strength did not compare to the kicks he received from Zeph. In order to save Luffy from drowning, Sanji dove in the pool. 
Kurobi followed Sanji into the water, demonstrating that Sanji's movement is slowed down underwater, while fish people remain unaffected, if not stronger, by beating him up and preventing him from surfacing. Grabbing Sanji, Kurobi pulled him up and then downed quickly so that the severe change in water pressure would crush Sanji's body. Thinking quickly, Sanji remembered that fish die when their gills are blocked. Sanji did this and escaped from his grasp. After assuring Zoro that Luffy was alive, Sanji challenged Kurobi to a battle on land. Kurobi accepted, but was quickly defeated by Sanji's kicks. He and Zoro then fought against Arlong, but the two were both defeated, agreeing that only Luffy could win. While Zoro kept Arlong distracted and with minor interference by Hachen, Sanji dove back into the water and freed Luffy's body. He, Nojiko, and Genzo then watched Luffy battle Arlong. After the destruction of the park, Sanji and the Straw Hats celebrated with the locals. They took off once more for the Grand Line with Nami officially joining them. Logetown Arc after regaining Nami, Sanji and his fellow crewmates sailed towards the Grand Line. Along the way, they decide to stop by Logetown for last-minute supplies for the journey ahead. Knowing the need of his fellow pirates, Sanji bought some food, among which was an elephant tuna. Though the shopping trip was relatively uneventful, something suddenly happened as the day went on. In the midst of their trip around Logetown, Sanji's captain had been captured by an old foe of his, Buggy. Having been caught, Luffy was going to be executed by Buggy on the same execution platform that Gold D. Roger died on. Seeing Luffy in danger, Sanji and Zoro immediately tried to rescue their captain. Though they weren't able to reach Luffy in time, Luffy nonetheless was miraculously saved by a bolt of lightning. Regardless of how it happened, Sanji regrouped with his fellow crewmates to escape from Buggy and the Marines stationed in Logetown. As Sanji and his two companions were escaping, they were momentarily stopped by Captain Smoker. Despite the brief road bump and the sudden appearance of a mysterious storm, Sanji and the rest were able to regroup back on the Going Merry to begin their new journey into the Grand Line. As the Straw Hat sailed through the storm, Sanji pulled out a barrel for which he and his fellow crewmates could have a little ceremony. Swearing their dreams upon breaking the barrel, the Straw Hats sailed towards the Grand Line. Reverse Mountain Arc After going through a storm and a slight detour, Sanji and the rest of the Straw Hats went up the Reverse Mountain to enter the Grand Line. Though they were able to successfully climb up the mountain, they unfortunately hit a snag as they entered the Grand Line. A giant whale was blocking the entrance. While Sanji and the rest of the crew were able to stop the ship just in time, Luffy's special seat, however, was broken in the process. Due to the ensuing reaction, Sanji and the rest of the crew, except Luffy, unfortunately got swallowed by the whale in retaliation. Within the whale's stomach, Sanji and his fellow pirates found out that an old guy named Crocus had made his home within the whale. From him, not only did they learn a way out of the whale, but also the whale's story. The heavily scarred whale, Laboon, was bashing his head on the red line in hopes of being reunited with a group of pirates that left him 50 years ago. While Sanji and the rest couldn't do anything about this problem, Sanji's captain, however, gave the whale some new hope to look forward to. After the situation with Laboon and getting into some antics involving how to travel on the Grand Line, Sanji and the rest of the crew's company was soon joined by two more, the beautiful Miss Wednesday and Mr. Nine. The two were suspicious-looking people that tried to take Laboon's meat earlier. Through certain circumstances, they required the aid of the Straw Hats in getting back to their home at Whiskey Peak. Despite the suspicious nature of the individuals, Sanji and the rest took the two aboard. Whiskey Peak Arc Due to the unpredictable weather of the Grand Line, Sanji ended up shoveling snow on board the Going Merry. Soon afterward, he had to help control the ship upon learning that it had turned 180 degrees, and when the weather changed once more, he prepared Onigiri to keep everyone's energy up. After much toil, Sanji and the rest of the crew managed to stabilize the ship, but were unable to move from sheer exhaustion. Eventually, the crew reached Whiskey Peak, where he noted that there was a good chance they would encounter some monsters since they were in the Grand Line. Sanji was surprised when they encountered people cheering at the sight of pirates. Upon being told that this was a town of welcoming and celebration, Sanji, Luffy, and Usopp immediately agreed to share tales of their adventures with the townsfolk. That night, Sanji managed to flirt with 20 women at once to the amazement of onlookers. Eventually, believing that this was a wonderful town, he passed out after drinking a large amount of alcohol. Later, after the Straw Hats were put on a hit list of Baroque works, Sanji and Usopp were violently woken up by Luffy, who dragged them out of the building they were sleeping in all the way to the ship. Once the rest of the Straw Hats and Vivi arrived, Sanji demanded to know why they were leaving such a nice town, only to be punched by Nami to shut him up. When Nico Robin appeared on the ship as Miss All Sunday, Sanji and Usopp confronted her, with Sanji pointing a pistol at her head. Head, but Robin threw them away with her powers, at which point Sanji saw her face and realized she was beautiful. After Vivi explained the situation to him, Sanji noted he still had a chance to shine before promising to protect her. Little Garden Arc After some sailing, Sanji and the rest of the crew reached their next destination, Little Garden. Noting that they didn't properly restock their food supply while in Whiskey Peak, Sanji hoped that they would properly resupply in the Jungle Island. As most of the crew was going to explore, Sanji asked Zoro to get some meat. The simple request, however, turned into a heated squabble as Zoro proclaimed that he would do so since he could retrieve more than Sanji anyway. 
Spurred by this, Sanji challenged Zoro to a hunting competition to see who could catch the bigger prey. With this, the both of them went into the jungle to hunt. As Sanji ventured through the jungle, he encountered a dinosaur. Defeating it, he returned back to the Going Merry with his prize. However, while waiting at the ship as time passed, Sanji noticed that something might be wrong as nobody else but him had returned. Setting out into the jungle once again, Sanji discovered by chance a house completely made out of wax, for which he momentarily enjoyed a cup of tea in it. As he was leaving, he heard a Den Den Mushi ring. Answering it, he was surprised to find out he was talking directly to the leader of Baroque Works, Crocodile. Realizing that the house he was in was the base of one of Baroque Works' agents, Sanji pretended to be Mr. Three for whom Crocodile mistook him for. Talking to Crocodile in this guise, Sanji tried to convince the Shichibukai that he had accomplished his mission in eliminating Vivi and the Straw Hat Pirates. As he was talking, Sanji was momentarily taken off guard as Mr. Thirteen and Miss Friday, the Unluckies, appeared. After defeating these two and finishing up his false report to Crocodile, Sanji took the Eternal Post to Alabasta that was meant to be given to the real Mr. Three by the Unluckies. Knowing that there were Baroque work agents on the island, Sanji then rushed in search of the rest of the crew. Eventually, Sanji regrouped with the rest of the crew together with a pair of giants that they befriended. To his joy, Sanji not only found out that both Vivi and Nami were safe, but he also got to see a nice sight from Nami without her shirt on as a result of the battle with Mr. Three and his group. After explaining things about his talk with Crocodile to the rest of the crew, Sanji revealed to them the eternal pose he swiped much to their delight. With this, and after a slight argument about who won the hunting competition, Sanji and the rest of the crew set sail for their next destination. With a little help from the giants in defeating a giant goldfish, they were able to finally leave Little Garden. Drum Island Arc Sanji was one of the most devastated upon hearing that Nami's disease could possibly be fatal. He assured the crew he did everything he could nutritionally, but they would need a doctor to truly help Nami get better. The crew agreed to head to a nearby island for help. Once he and the rest of the Straw Hats arrived on Drum Island in search of a doctor, he decided to depart with Luffy and Nami on their quest to find the witch living in the abandoned castle who could possibly save Nami's life. Along the way, he and Luffy encounter an infant snow rabbit and easily defeat it. However, this invoked the wrath of an entire herd of enormous adults who attempted to assault the two. During the ensuing struggle, Sanji protected Luffy, and more importantly to him, Nami, at the cost of becoming critically injured. Luffy pulled the injured Sanji out of the snow and was determined to carry them up the mountain. In Sandals. The rabbits that caused an avalanche were soon helping them reach the top due to Luffy helping a buried one. They fought off Wapol and his men so Luffy could continue to bring Sanji and Nami to the top of the mountain. Upon regaining consciousness, Sanji attempted to capture Chopper, hoping to turn him into a stew for Nami to make her feel better. Once he witnessed Chopper's transformation, though, he expressed shock along with Luffy that the reindeer was a monster. However, once Luffy claimed that he wanted to recruit Chopper to his crew, Sanji seemed to go along with his desire. As Luffy continued to chase after Chopper, Sanji and Nami listened as Dr. Kureha informed them of Chopper's sad past. As she finished her story, Chopper burst into the room, informing her that Wapol had returned. Sanji joined Luffy outside to defeat Wapol and his minions, Chess and Kuromarimo. When Luffy ran inside to get Nami's jacket, though, Sanji and Chopper were left to fend for themselves. Kuromarimo launched bits of his hair onto Sanji, which clung to his body. The hair was then lit on fire by one of Chess's flaming arrows. After Luffy and Chopper began their counterattack, Dr. Kureha pinned Sanji to the ground, making sure he didn't battle so he wouldn't agitate his already wounded body. Even without his help, though, Luffy and Chopper managed to deal with the Tyrant King and his two followers. After Luffy had defeated Wapol and the rest of the crew joined up with Luffy and Sanji, Chopper approached Luffy and said that he declined his offer to become a pirate. Luffy, however, told them to shut up and come with him, which got Chopper to join his crew after all. Shortly after the recruitment of Chopper, Sanji and the rest of the crew continued their journey with their newfound friend. Alabasta Arc Sanji was below deck when the rest of the crew rescued and met Mr. Two, Bon Clay. When the crew landed, Sanji was apparently assigned to go get desert attire for the crew, which resulted in him buying dancers' outfits for Vivi and Nami, even though they wore an outfit over those clothes in the desert to prevent sunburn. Throughout the desert, Sanji got annoyed with Luffy losing their food, first with the Kung Fu dugongs and then with the Warusagi birds. When the Straw Hats came across the Sandora Lizard, Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji easily defeated it. Upon reaching Rain Base, the crew separated to escape the Marines. He and Chopper were the only ones who weren't captured by Crocodile. After they decimated the Baroque Works millions, Sanji introduced himself as Mr. Prince and made it seem like he had been captured to lure Crocodile outside with a baby Den Den Mushi. Using Chopper as a decoy, Sanji then somehow destroyed the bridge and found Vivi, who was sent to find help. Upon entering the room in which the crew was held, Sanji fought Bananawani and got the crew to the cage that the rest of the crew were in. Instead, though, Sanji kicked Mr. Three's wax wax ball out of one of them, whom he then persuaded to make a duplicate key. The crew then raced to the capital of Alabasta on a moving crab. When the crew provided a distraction for the remaining Baroque Works officers' agents so Vivi could get past them, 
Sanji and Chopper were chased by Mr. Four and Miss Merry Christmas. Sanji left Chopper to go check on Usopp and Matsuge, who were followed by Bon Clay. Sanji set off to save Vivi from Bon Clay. He initially had the advantage over Bon Clay's Okama Kenbo and outright ridiculous use of his Mane Mane no Mi. Bon Clay then turned to Nami, which he recognized as Sanji's weakness. As Nami, Sanji couldn't bring himself to attack Bon Clay. Sanji then saw Bon Clay's weakness. He couldn't use his Okama Kenpo in Nami's form. After Bon Kei uses his swan slippers, the battle reached its peak where Sanji ultimately emerged as the victor, which ended the battle. As Bon Clay was incapable of even moving, he asked Sanji to finish him off. Sanji, however, said that they had a good fight and didn't need to finish him off, which apparently made Bon Clay very happy. Sanji, however, did kick him and take the goggles which he had stolen from Usopp. After he met up with Vivi and the rest of the crew, he began searching for the bomb which was set to destroy the entire city. After Vivi had found it, he and the rest of the crew assisted Vivi in climbing the tower. When Vivi reached the top of the tower, she took out Mr. Seven and Miss Father's Day who were guarding the bomb. She then defused it and prevented the cannon from firing the bomb. However, this didn't end the threat to the city as the bomb was revealed to be a time bomb and would explode anyway. Pell, however, came and flew the bomb to a safe location, sacrificing his own life while saving his beloved kingdom. After the bomb had gone off, the struggle between the rebels and the king's army went on as if nothing had happened, which caused Sanji and the rest of the crew to bring the battle to a halt as much as they could. But shortly after Crocodile was defeated, it began raining, and everything lost control. As the events unfolded on the battlefield, Sanji and his crewmates took this opportunity to find Luffy, whom they found later being carried by the king himself. After the king left, Luffy went to the battlefield to sort things out. Sanji and the rest of the crew all passed out from fatigue. Luffy woke up three days later in the palace alongside some of his crewmates. After Luffy and his crew had a banquet with Vivi and several others to celebrate their victory, they went on to the bath, where the king properly thanked Luffy and his crewmates. After all the festivities, the crew left silently in the night to continue their journey. As they arrived at their ship, they met up with the previously defeated Bon Clay, who had apparently protected their ship from being taken away. After the crew told them about their objectives, Bon Clay offered to go with them. Shortly after they arrived at the meeting spot they had arranged with Vivi, Hina, along with some marines, came to capture the Straw Hat Pirates. Bon Clay pleaded that they should escape as soon as possible. The crew refused, however, and said that they would wait for their friend. After hearing this, Bon Clay was touched by their sense of friendship and offered himself as bait to lure the marines away from the crew, which ultimately got him captured. After Vivi had arrived and told them that she wouldn't accompany them on their next journey, she asked them if they would still consider her as one of them, to which the entire crew replied by raising their left arms in the air and showing the X mark which symbolized their friendship. This brought Vivi to tears as she raised her left arm as well. After this, the crew sailed off to continue their journey. Jaya Arc Though depressed at not having the beautiful Vivi join the crew, Sanji and the rest of his crewmates came across a new development. Another beauty, Nico Robin, aka Miss All Sunday from Baroque Works, had stowed away on the Going Merry and, to Sanji's delight, asked Luffy to let her join his crew. To Sanji's joy, Luffy agreed, and thus Sanji wasted no time in making Robin feel right at home. Not long afterwards, a massive ship fell from the sky. From a brief search of the sinking ship by his captain and an explanation from Robin, Sanji and the rest of his crew learned that the ship fell from an island in the sky called Skypea. Needing more information on the matter, Sanji joined the expedition team consisting of himself, Luffy, and Zoro. Using special diving suits made by Usopp, they explored the sunken ship. As they were exploring the ship, their search was suddenly cut short as the ship was suddenly clamped and filled with air, and a bunch of other people appeared. After taking care of the intruders within the newly created air pocket, Sanji and his companions encountered someone bursting in. Although his captain initially got along with the person, they unfortunately got on bad terms with Masiro when they found out that they were after the same thing. Fortunately, Sanji and his two crewmates were able to escape him as well as from a giant turtle that ate the ship. As Sanji and the others were about to deal with the other guy and his crew, they suddenly found themselves in the presence of shadowy silhouettes, much larger than normal giants. After apparently escaping from the creatures and getting rid of a little stowaway, Sanji and the rest learned of Jaya from an eternal pose that Robin stole. Needing more info on Skypea, Sanji and the rest sailed to the island. Arriving at Jaya at the port of Mocktown, Sanji and the others learned that they had landed at a lawless town filled with pirates. Unable to join either Nami's group or Robin in exploring the place due to Usopp and Chopper's begging, Sanji stayed behind to guard the Going Merry. After the rather uneventful wait, Sanji and his two companions were surprised to find that Luffy and Zoro were heavily wounded. Although Nami's group proved unsuccessful in getting any information, Robin was. Learning that a man by the name of Mont Blanc Cricket might know something, Sanji and the others headed off to the other side of Jaya. After encountering and escaping from a brief encounter with Masiro's brother, Shoujo, Sanji and his fellow crewmates came upon Cricket's home. There they had a little misunderstanding with Cricket, and Sanji had a brief battle with them. However, in the middle of the battle, Sanji and the rest found that the old man suffered from decompression sickness. Taking care of the old man, Sanji and the rest were able to clear things up with him and his two protégés, Masura and Shoujo. 
As Sanji and his fellow crewmates explain their problem on how to get to Skypea, they learn that Cricket was a descendant of Moblog Noland, a guy known for being a liar in Sanji's home seas. Showing interest in the story and Cricket's dream, they convince them to help them out. Later, as the Saruyama Alliance and the Straw Hats were dining on Sanji's cooking, they realized they needed something important to aid them, the South Bird. This bird, as explained to them by Cricket, was needed to find a knock-up stream needed to help them to get to Skypea. Having been told this, Sanji and his fellow pirates quickly went in search of the bird. Teaming up with Nami and Usopp, Sanji and his fellow companions found that searching for the bird was harder than expected. It was also revealed in a gag scene that Sanji is terrified of spiders. Despite the antics, Sanji and his fellow pirates were able to catch a South Bird thanks to Robin. With the bird, they headed back to Cricket's. Upon returning, however, they discovered that while they were away, Cricket and his protégés were robbed by some pirates that Luffy encountered in Mock Town earlier. As Luffy went off to get Cricket's gold back, Sanji and the rest stayed behind to heal the Saruyama Alliance's wounds and prepare the Going Merry. After a long wait for Luffy's return, Sanji and the fellow pirates were able to set sail on the newly modified Going Airy escorted by Masura and Shoujo's ships. Arriving at the designated place for a knock-up stream, they waited until the conditions were just. As they maneuvered the Going Merry through the waves into the right position, the Straw Hats encountered Marshal D. Teach and his crew that Luffy met at Mock Town. The pirate and his crew had come to claim the new bounties issued on Luffy and Zoro during Alabasta. To Sanji's disappointment, he didn't get one despite his efforts. This encounter with the pirate, however, was short as the knock-up stream suddenly started to burst. Riding on the propelled Going Merry, Sanji alongside his fellow pirates went up into the sky, as well as inadvertently escaping from the pursuing pirate. Skypea Arc after surviving an intense trip up into the sky, Sanji and the rest of the Straw Hats arrived in an ocean of clouds. Experiencing their new surroundings for the first time, Sanji and the rest soon encountered hostilities. Due to the lack of oxygen in such a high-altitude environment, Sanji, Luffy, and Zoro were easily beaten by a masked assailant. Fortunately, the Straw Hats were saved by the Sky Knight, Gonfall, and his pet bird, Pierre. After being saved by this strange knight, Sanji and the rest maneuvered the Going Merry across the White Sea until they reached Heaven's Gate. Upon entering, they were allowed to be transported to Skypea by a Sky Shrimp without paying the Gate Watcher, not knowing that they would be entering illegally. Arriving at Angel Beach, Sanji and the rest of the Straw Hats soon befriended two locales, Konus and her father, Pagaya, the former of the two entranced Sanji with her beauty. As the Straw Hats were entertained and informed of local stuff by the two, Sanji noticed that Nami, who had decided to try out a dial-powered device called a Waver earlier, had gone out of sight. It was then that the pirates had learned of the forbidden place called Upper Yard. Fearing that Nami may have gone there, Sanji immediately wanted the rest of them to look for her. However, before the pirates could do anything, they were intercepted by the White Berets. Having been accused of entering illegally, the Straw Hats were forced to pay the fine. Despite their initial cooperation, they were put into a dire situation when a recently returned Nami unintentionally knocked down the White Beret leader, McKinley, with the waiver. Seeing the situation, Sanji, along with Zoro and Luffy, immediately subdued the hostile White Berets. Though they defeated them, they unfortunately got a higher penalty than what they started out with. Realizing the situation they were in, the Straw Hats decided to set sail so as to not bring any trouble to their hosts. As Sanji was preparing for the journey ahead of Konus' house, he along with Luffy and Usopp learned of a new development. Aside from the fact that Nami had put a shirt over her bikini top, Sanji and his two crewmates saw the Going Merry and the rest of the crew on it being taken by a large Sky Shrimp. From their hosts, Sanji and the remaining two pirates learned that the rest of the crew were being taken to a sacrificial altar in Upper Yard to receive judgment from the priests. They, on the other hand, were to be tested as they attempted to rescue their captured crewmates at Upper Yard. Having no other choice, Sanji and his companions decided to head to Upper Yard to rescue the rest of the crew. Led by Konus to a dock for gondolas, Sanji and his two companions were instructed how to get to the Upper Yard and given a gondola, Karasumaru, to use. As they were led by her, they noticed that she and everyone else they met along the way were acting very strange. To their surprise, Konus revealed to Sanji and his two companions that not only was it her that called the shrimp that took away the Going Merry, but she was also helping them so selflessly as it was her forced duty to Skypea's god, Enel. Despite this revelation, though, the pirates were more concerned that Konus was now going to be targeted for telling them such things. It was, however, too late. Enel exacted his judgment on Konus for telling them the truth in the form of a gigantic lightning bolt. Fortunately, Konus was saved at that moment by Gonfall. With the knight promising to take care of Konus, Sanji and his two companions headed out to Upper Yard. The Upper Yard Forest As Sanji and his fellow pirates sailed through the Upper Yard Forest in search of their kidnapped crewmates, they eventually came upon one of the so-called Trials. 
Entering a part of the forest filled with lots of balls made from island clouds, they soon encountered one of NL's priests, Satori. Upon encountering the priest, not only did Sanji and his companions find out that Satori had some form of technique that allowed him to predict where their attacks would come from, they also found out that the guy had some sort of trick that allowed him to deliver massive blows with a simple touch. Adding to the fact that the priest had also hidden all sorts of surprises in the clouds found throughout the area, Sanji and his two companions found the priest to be very challenging as he knocked them off the Karasumaru and set their boat adrift. As they struggled fighting with the priest, Sanji and Luffy were able to get a chance to hit a clean blow when Luffy messed up one of Satori's attacks. In the smoke of the explosion, Luffy was able to capture the priest and said that the ability to predict attacks is useless if the attacks can't be dodged. Restrained, he began begging for mercy, claiming the odds of two versus one was unfair. Sanji became enraged and reminded Satori about the kidnapping of Nami and Robin, Zoro and Chopper as well, but like, come on. And that Satori had no right to talk about fairness, and he told Satori of his own challenge, of love. With Luffy still restraining Satori, Sanji compared his attack to tenderizing meat and was able to KO Satori with a single attack. Having defeated the priest, Sanji and Luffy pressed forward after Usopp relocated the lost Karasumaru. With this, they continued their search, not knowing of the consequences their action had caused. As they continued, Sanji and his fellow pirates found the rest of the trip uneventful, except for a brief meeting with the gorilla that attacked them earlier, Wiper. Eventually, they were able to reunite with the rest of the crew at the sacrificial altar. Seeing the state the ship was in and having too many questions, Sanji and the rest of the crew decided to camp out for the night. As they discussed the events that had unfolded, Sanji and the rest learned something important from Nami. Upper Yard was the long-lost part of Jaya mentioned in Mont Blanc Nolan's tale. Realizing the truth of the tale, Sanji and the others decided that as pirates they should search for the fabled gold mentioned as well. After a night of discussing things and dancing with wolves, Sanji and the rest of the Straw Hats went ahead with the plans they made. With the Going Merry somehow mysteriously fixed, which Usopp claimed was done by some mysterious spirit, Sanji joined the team consisting of himself, Nami, and Usopp. With the ship, they were able to navigate out of the upper yard and dock it as close to the ruins where the gold were said to be. As they were sailing towards the designated place, Gonfal, who had joined the pirate's company through some events, explained some things about Skypea and Upper Yard. From the former god, they learned about Skypea's history, the use of dials in warfare, and mantra, which explained some of the mysteries they dealt with in the Sky Island. Though their trip out of the Upper Yard forest initially appeared uneventful, Sanji and his companions had an unexpected meeting. Enel appeared before them. With the god before them, Sanji and Usopp were easily knocked out cold by Enel's powers. Though unconscious, they were protected by Nami and Gonfal from Hotori and Kotori. Later, their wounds were tended by Konus, who came to the upper yard with her father and a Shandia girl. After recuperating through a series of events, Sanji awoke to find that Nami was nowhere in sight on the Going Merry. As he looked around, he spotted her on a flying ship hovering over upper yard, the Maxim. Seeing that she needed rescuing, Sanji woke up Usopp and they both attempted a rescue mission. Using Usopp's devices, Sanji and his fellow pirate were able to climb aboard the soaring ship. As the two split up in order to locate Nami faster, Sanji came across some important looking gears within the ship. After messing with the Maxim's gears, Sanji arrived just in time to the top deck to save Usopp and Nami from Enel, though he was shocked by Enel for doing so. Sanji's actions down below, however, put a wrench in the god's plan. As Sanji lay unconscious once again, Usopp, who was able to secretly stay aboard, took the electrocuted chef off the Maxim and back down to the rest of the Straw Hats. Though he had been rendered unconscious again by Enel, Sanji woke up upon hearing the legendary Shandarian Golden Belfry bell ring as Luffy finally defeated Enel. After the whole ordeal and some recuperating, Sanji and his fellow pirates decided to hold a large party with everyone on Skypea in celebration. After several days of non-stop partying, Sanji along with the rest of the crew were awoken by Luffy to get a hold of some gold. Learning from his captain of the gold located in the belly of the giant snake Nola, Sanji and a few of the crew journeyed into the sleeping beast's belly to gather some much sought after treasure. As Sanji and the rest were preparing to leave with their stolen loot, they saw a bunch of Skypeans and Shandia carrying what appeared to be a large cannon. Believing the people were going to get them for stealing, Sanji and the rest immediately left in a hurry towards the Going Merry, not knowing that the cannon that the Sky Natives were carrying was actually a golden pillar that they were planning to give to the Straw Hats as a reward. After escaping aboard the Going Merry, Sanji and the rest of the crew were taken to Cloud's End by Konus. There they were transported back down to the Blue Sea by a balloon octopus. As they floated back down, they heard the ringing of the golden bell that was rung in honor of the Straw Hats. Long Ring Long Land Arc After their adventure in Skypea, Sanji and the rest of the Straw Hats finally returned to the Blue Sea. After navigating through some of the Grand Line's dangers and a discussion with what to do with the gold they gathered from their previous adventure, Sanji and the rest soon came to their next destination. Where Luffy and the two others decide to explore this new island, Sanji and the rest decide to stay on the Going Merry. However, as they were preparing things, they soon came to face a new danger. A giant ship had trapped the Going Merry between its anchors and its crew. The Foxy Pirates were itching for a fight with the Straw Hats. 
Facing this new foe, Sanji and those with him soon learned that the Foxy Pirates wanted to challenge the Straw Hats to a Davy Back fight. Knowing what a Davy Back fight is, Sanji along with Robin explained what it was to Zoro and Nami. With this knowledge, Sanji and the rest also realized what had happened to the pirates they had met earlier. Knowing that their pride as pirates was on the line, Sanji decided to partake in the sport as his captain accepted the challenge in the distance with a gunshot. With this, Sanji and his fellow pirates entered into a Davy Back fight with the Foxy Pirates. After some pre-game formalities, Sanji and his fellow pirates decided on what Davy Back fight games they would participate in. Along with Zaro and Chopper, Sanji decided to participate in the second round of the Davy Back fight games, the Groggy Ring. As Sanji and the rest awaited their turn and watched the first round of the games, they soon learned of the Foxy Pirates' cheating ways. The most devastating of their tricks the Straw Hats witnessed was from their Captain Foxy, who had eaten the Noro Noro Nomi. With this devil fruit, Foxy caused the Straw Hats to lose the first round. Having won the round for the Foxy Pirates, the sneaky captain then took away Chopper, thus taking one of Sanji's teammates for the next round. With Chopper taken away, Sanji along with Zoro were forced to not only participate in their event with one man short, but also forced to face three of the most gigantic members of the Foxy Pirates, the Groggy Monsters. Following the rules of the game, Sanji was unfortunately made the ball of the Straw Hat team. His role was that if he was dunked into the Straw Hat's buoy, the Groggy Monsters would win. For his opponents, the ball was the biggest member of the team, Big Pan. While Sanji and Zoro were more than capable of handling the situation they were in, their team however suffered a major setback. Due to their rivalry with one another, they spent most of the match arguing with each other rather than working together, a trait their gigantic opponents were masters of. To make matters worse, the referee of the match was a member of the Foxy Pirates who would unfortunately look the other way at certain times, thus giving the groggy monsters chances to use illegal weapons. This made Sanji mad, however, despite his protests, he was unfortunately given a yellow penalty card for attacking the referee. With Sanji and Zoro's inability to properly work together, the groggy monsters' teamwork and the crooked referee, the two of them soon found themselves being hammered by their opponents. As the two of them were beaten to a bloody pulp, they however decided to then stop bickering with one another and defeat their opponents. Standing once more to their opponents, Sanji and Zoro were then pitted against the strongest attack the groggy monsters could deliver, Monster Burger. However, thanks to them finally deciding to work together, they were able to counter the attack successfully and turn it to their advantage. In the middle of the fray, Sanji also kicked one of the groggy monsters, Pickles, towards the unsuspecting referee who decided to not watch the match as the groggy monsters were cheating. With practically all of their opponents neutralized through their teamwork, Sanji and Zoro did one last team attack which ultimately resulted in Zoro dunking Big Pan into the groggy monster's buoy. Sanji and Zoro were thus able to win one match for the Straw Hats in the Davy Back fight and get Chopper back. After his and Zoro's event and getting Chopper, Sanji and the rest of the crew watched on as Luffy partook in his turn in the Davy Back fight, the main event, combat. Despite Foxy, Luffy was able to defeat the Trickster to the amazement of Sanji and the rest of the Straw Hats. Having won the final round against Foxy, the Straw Hats were given the choice of picking one of the Foxy Pirates. Despite the sexy Gina, one of the Foxy shipwrights, catching Sanji's eye, Luffy instead decides to take Foxy's Jolly Roger. After taking the symbol and giving the pirates a new one made by Luffy, the Straw Hats bid farewell to the Foxy Pirates. Having dealt with the Foxy Pirates, Sanji and the rest of the Straw Hats decided to go see Tanjit, a friend that Luffy and those with him made earlier. However, when they arrived at Tanjit's house, an unexpected guest was also awaiting there, Marine Admiral Aokiji. Though this Marine initially appeared to be non-hostile to the Straw Hats, even helping Tanjit out, it soon became clear that he was a threat to them, particularly towards Nico Robin. Before they knew it, Sanji and half of the crew were fighting against the Marine. However, due to Aokiji's Hie Hie no Mi Devil Fruit powers, Sanji ended up getting his leg frozen with Luffy's arm and Zoro's sword. As Aokiji froze Nico Robin, Sanji and the rest retreated to thaw themselves out while Luffy dealt with the Marine. After thawing out his legs, Sanji along with Zoro decided to head back to help Luffy. By the time they were there, however, Luffy was completely frozen, but thankfully still in one piece, heh, <laughs> for the rest of the crew to thaw out. Though the encounter with the Marine had left Sanji and the Straw Hats warned, they fortunately were able to survive it. After some time for Robin and Luffy to recover, the crew decided to continue on their journey. Water 7 Arc As Sanji and the rest of the crew were heading to their next destination, they ran into a little trouble with a giant frog and what appeared to be a train running on water. They were explained to about the deal with the frog Yokozuna and the train the Puffing Tom by the nearby train station manager Kokoro and her granddaughter Chimney. They were also informed that their next destination should be Water 7, a city famed for its shipwrights. Learning about this, the Straw Hats decided to venture to the city in search of a shipwright to join their crew and fix Mary. Sanji personally wanted to find an attractive female shipwright to join them, obviously. Eventually, the Straw Hats reached the fabled city of Water. Sometime after docking at a peninsula near Water 7, Sanji decided to go shopping upon finding that most of the crew went on ahead. 
As he was shopping around for supplies, he caught a glimpse of Nico Robin accompanying a masked person into an alley. He ran into them, thinking it was Chopper along with Robin. However, just as he was about to catch up to her, Robin and the masked person somehow vanished while briefly out of Sanji's sight. This mystery was further deepened when he met up with Chopper and learned that the masked person was not Chopper in human form. Remembering what Aokiji said about Robin earlier, Sanji feared the worst. With nothing else to do, he and Chopper decided to go back to the Going Merry and await her there. Upon arriving back at the ship, things got worse. First, Sanji learned from Zoro that a shipwright who examined Mary deemed it incapable of being repaired. Next, he learned from Nami that Usopp had been attacked by a gang of ship dismantlers called the Frankie family while carrying two-thirds of the money the Straw Hats exchanged for the gold they got from Skypea and lost it all. Together with Chopper and Zoro, Sanji went on to where Nami had left Usopp. Instead of Usopp, though, they found a trail of blood. Then joined up by Luffy, Sanji and the rest went to the hideout of the Frankie family, figuring that Usopp had gone there to retrieve the money. Sure enough, they found a heavily beaten Usopp in front of the Frankie house. Enraged by what the Frankie family had done to Usopp, Sanji and his fellow Straw Hats decided to take revenge. Barging into the gang's hideout, they completely pulverized the Frankie family. Unfortunately, the money was long since gone, having been taken somewhere by the gang's leader, Frankie. With nothing else to do about it, and Robin still unaccounted for, Sanji and the rest returned back to the Going Merry to face the hard truth, and they had to part with the Merry. Though Sanji and most of the other Straw Hats accepted that this was the only decision, Usopp went against it. With feelings raging between Usopp and Luffy over the matter, Sanji and the rest of the Straw Hats were powerless to prevent Usopp from deciding to leave the crew and challenge Luffy for the ownership of the Going Merry. Incited by this turn of events, Sanji could only but argue with Zoro over which one of them could have prevented such a thing. In the end, however, the deal between Luffy and Usopp took place. Though Sanji and the rest witnessed Usopp put up a valiant effort against Luffy, ultimately he lost. As the dust settled from the duel, Sanji prevented Chopper from helping Usopp fully. Understanding the situation of how Usopp's pride would be broken if he as the loser was treated, Sanji explained to Chopper this hard-to-hear truth. With the crew shaken up by the incident, Sanji and the rest left Usopp with the Going Merry and rented a room in the city. Knowing that Robin wasn't around during this terrible affair, Sanji waited for her at the peninsula to tell her what happened. Despite his waiting, Robin never turned up. Returning to the hotel momentarily, he decided to look for her in the streets with Chopper aiding him. Just as the two were about to head off, they learned some troubling news from Nami. Iceberg, the mayor of Water 7 and president of the Galley Law Company, had recently been shot. The man was an important figure whom the Straw Hats needed in regards to ship transactions. Apart from this, the two later learned while searching for Robin of more troubling news. The yearly high tide called Aqua Laguna was coming to hit Water 7 soon. Fearing that Usopp may not know that Aqua Laguna was coming, both Sanji and Chopper warned their former crewmate indirectly about the impeding danger. After their little charade, the two continued their search for Robin. As they continued searching, things got even more hectic. It was identified that Robin was involved in Iceberg's shooting. Due to this, the whole city became frantic in the search for Robin or any of her associates. Fortunately, because Sanji and Chopper were not identified as being associated with her, they were able to continue searching for her without much bother. Though Sanji and Chopper finally found Robin in the midst of the chaos, she told him what they'd feared upon learning about her involvement in the whole incident with Iceberg. She really was responsible and now wanted to part ways with the crew. With this turn of events, Sanji and Chopper were left questioning Robin's apparent betrayal. Though she stated her reasons, Sanji refused to accept it and told Chopper he would forgive her lies. As he sent Chopper off to tell Luffy and the others what had just happened, Sanji decided to investigate further the real reason behind Robin's actions. Figuring Robin might leave Water 7 via the next sea train departure, he waited for her at the train station. Eventually, his weight bore fruit as she arrived at the station at the next departure accompanied by some marines and some world government agents. Also with her were two captives, Usopp and Frankie. Seeing that the sea train was about to depart and that the others probably wouldn't be able to arrive in time, Sanji left a note to Nami describing his actions and stowed away on board the Puffing Tom. Having stowed away, Sanji was soon discovered by government agents in the car. He was able to defeat them and their leader, Jerry, easily. Battling across to the next car, Sanji was able to reunite with his former crewmate, Usopp, and someone quite unexpected, Frankie. Even though I said that earlier, but don't worry about it. Despite all that happened before in Water 7, Sanji freed the two. Moving to the roof of the car to hide from the rest of the agents and marines, Sanji then contacted Nami via Denden Mushi to report the situation and was then informed by her the real reason behind Robin's actions. Having learned about what really happened, Sanji was more determined than before to rescue Robin from the CP9. With this news, Sanji was joined in the rescue by Frankie, who was moved by their story. Usopp, on the other hand, did not join Sanji due to his fight with Luffy. Instead, he left them and returned to his newly formed alter ego, Soga King. 
Together, the three of them increase their chances of rescuing Robin by tricking most of the agents and marines on board into the train's last two cars. With the cars filled, they detached them and then left their would-be foes behind. Continuing on, they eventually came across the dining car and the government agent guarding it, Wanze. Deciding to fight this chef, Sanji lets Soga King and Frankie go ahead to save Robin. As Sanji fought against Wanze, he had little trouble with Wanze's ramen kenpo style and his sticky ramen suit. Eventually, Sanji was able to counter this by slicing the suit up with his culinary skills. With this obstruction out of the way, Sanji proceeded to punish this chef for his blasphemy against the culinary arts and his insults against Robin, kicking him hard enough to permanently reshape his face. After beating Wanze and reuniting with Frankie in the next car, Sanji came across the CP9 agents that took Robin. Meeting these government agents, Sanji found them despicable in their treatment of a fellow agent defeated by Frankie and their view of justice. Just then, Soga King and Robin emerged from the car ahead. While Robin refused to be rescued, Soga King managed to grab her in the midst of the CP9 agents using a smokescreen. Having Robin with them, Sanji and his companions proceeded to detach the previous cars in order to escape. Despite this, however, the CP9 agents managed to pursue them. Added to that, Robin still refused to be rescued. With all of this happening, Sanji and his former crewmates were only able to finally get some distance away from the agents thanks to Frankie sacrificing himself. Despite Frankie's sacrifice, Robin was still taken back from Sanji and Soga King via one of the agents' devil fruit power. Though he tried to rescue her, Sanji was stalled and the agent left with Robin. Completely separated from CP9, who now had both Robin and Frankie, all that Sanji and Soga King could do was wait for their pursuing allies to pick them up. Eni's Lobby Arc as they arrive in Eni's lobby, the Rocket Man lands on Oimo's back. All of them, except Luffy, rode Sodom and Gomorrah into the courthouse. As they waited for the bridge to be activated, they lined up on the roof and convinced Robin to accept their request of saving her. When Kokoro learned that the bridge was only lowered halfway, she helped by using the Rocket Man. Luffy dragged them all down as he jumps onto the train and they crash landed in the Tower of Justice. After they landed, Fukuro appeared declaring that a key is needed to uncuff Robin. The crew decided to fight individually and set out in search for the CP9 agents. Sanji confronted Khalifa and requested to teach her how to make tea. Later, Khalifa attacked Sanji, who only defended himself due to his chivalry. He was later seen by Nami and Chopper under the effect of the Awa Awa Nomi and told him, I will not kick a woman even if I die. He recovered from the Devil Fruit's powers when the bath from Khalifa's room fell near him during Chopper's rampage after his transformation into Monster Point. He takes over for Usopp, who had been defeated, and introduced himself as the Hunter, while Jabra is the Wolf. He defeated Jabra after a fierce battle with his new skill called Diable Jam and took his key. Later, he was seen with Zoro cheering for Usopp's sniper skills. He and Zoro later carried Usopp to the tunnel to escape. They almost drowned him when the tunnel flooded, but were saved by Kokoro, who also ruined Sanji's dreams of beautiful mermaids because Kokoro turned out to be a mermaid and was older than Sanji had hoped a mermaid would be. As they stole their escape ship, Sanji disappeared. It was later revealed that he turned the lever to close the Gate of Justice, which in turn caused many whirlpools to appear that threw off the Marines' aim. Unfortunately, their escape ship exploded. Though shortly after that, they heard a voice telling them to jump over into the sea, and when they realized it was the Going Merry, they jumped together and finally escaped with help of Nami's navigation skills. With the Going Merry, everyone has managed to escape Ennius Lobby safely. However, after escaping, Iceberg arrived in Galley Law just in time to pick up the Straw Hat Pirates as the Going Merry suddenly broke apart. Luffy then gave the Going Merry a Viking funeral by burning it as the crew tearfully said goodbye, though Sanji and Zoro managed to maintain their straight faces. Post Eni's Lobby Arc Sanji helped cook for the festival the Straw Hats and the Allies were having, which incidentally drained almost all of their remaining berries. He received his first bounty of 77 million berries and his nickname Black Leg in contrast to his old mentor Zeph, who was known as Red Leg. However, Sanji was horrified at the picture on the bounty poster. The Marines weren't able to obtain a photo of him, someone left the lens cap on the camera, and thus used a horrendous composite sketch. In a flashback, Sanji informed Luffy about Usopp rehearsing what they had to say to rejoin the crew, and a delighted Luffy wanted to go get him. Zoro, however, believed that Usopp's behavior was disrespectful to Luffy's rank as captain, and threatened to leave the crew if Luffy allowed himself to be pushed around. Eventually, the crew agreed with Zoro, and decided to only allow Usopp back if he acknowledged his wrongdoing and apologized. After waiting for the Thousand Sunny to be completed, the Straw Hats, with the newly added Frankie, were forced into a hasty departure due to Garp changing his mind about capturing them. Without Usopp, Luffy cried out in joy when Usopp apologized for being stubborn and asked if he could rejoin the crew, of which everyone happily accepted. Sanji was then seen defending the Thousand Sunny from Garp's attack, but they were ultimately able to escape thanks to the coup de burst. After their escape, they were able to continue to their next destination, Fishman Island. Thriller Bark Arc 
After sailing for some time on the Thousand Sunny, Sanji and the rest of the crew come across a mysterious barrel floating on the ocean. Upon opening it, a flash shot up from it. After braving a storm that mysteriously came afterwards thanks to Nami and Frankie, Sanji and the rest of the crew found themselves in the presence of a ghost ship. Making sure nothing would happen to Nami, who decided to tag along Luffy in exploring the ship, Sanji climbed aboard with them. There they met a skeleton named Brook, whose being made Sanji ask a lot of questions. Luffy instead asked Brook to join his crew, which in turn the skeleton accepted. This shocked both Sanji and Nami. After climbing back down to the Thousand Sunny, Brook suggested that they eat dinner, which Sanji agrees to cook. Over dinner, Sanji was deeply appalled by Brook's bad manners as the skeleton explained his past. Just as Brook was about to perform on his violin for Sanji and the rest of the crew after dinner, a ghost appeared and some clanking sounds were heard. These sounds were caused by the gates of the island that had suddenly appeared, Thriller Bark, closing. These events prompted Brook to head to the island before Sanji and the rest of the Straw Hats' eyes. Frankie then showed the other Straw Hats his present, which Nami, Usopp, and Chopper decided to test drive. After crashing into the island and hearing Nami scream, Sanji decided to go ashore and find her. However, before Sanji and the rest could go to the island, they were stopped by an invisible thing. The thing grabbed Sanji's leg as he was jumping overboard and slammed the cook into the side of the ship. It then proceeded to trip up Sanji and lick Robin. The thing later left Sanji and the rest baffled. After the Thousand Sunny got caught in what was apparently an unbreakable spider web, Sanji and the rest descended to the island. There they met the Cerberus, which didn't intimidate Sanji or the rest of the crew. After Luffy tamed the beast, Sanji and the rest met two more of the island's creatures. Luffy caught the geezer tree, while Frankie caught the unicorn. Sanji, along with Zoro, then stopped Luffy before he could ask the geezer tree to join the group. Later, as Sanji was scolding Luffy and the rest came across some ghosts whose strange abilities affected Frankie, Luffy, and Zoro. After they recovered, they pressed forward. Sanji and the rest encountered some zombies and defeated them in a combo technique. 600 million berry jackpot. The group then met with an old man who looked like a zombie and asked them to defeat Gekko Moira who had stolen his shadow, so the group headed to the mansion. During the fight inside the mansion, Sanji was kidnapped and brought to Moira to have his shadow put inside Inupe. The rest of the crew later found him on the Thousand Sunny, along with Zoro and Luffy, decorated by the zombies. After finding out what happened to Nami, Sanji was more than determined to stop her wedding with Absalom. After the crew split up, Sanji along with Usopp, Frankie, and Zoro ended up in Persona's room. When it was revealed that only Usopp can stand up to Persona's ghosts, Sanji made his way to the wedding chapel to save Nami. There, Sanji engaged Absalom in battle to stop the intended wedding to Nami. He was able to defeat them with ease due to his rage, but got hit a few times to protect Nami. Sanji later teamed up with other members of the crew to take down Oars. Sanji landed the final blow in flipping Oars over, taking out his legs with an anti-manor kick course. Shortly after their feat, Gekko Moira showed up in Oars' stomach, which increased Oars' mobility and effectiveness in battle. After Robin's shadow was taken, Sanji was furious enough at Oars and Moira to use Diablo Jam to combat Oars. He ended up redirecting into a giant-sized Gomu Gomu no Bazooka from hitting the unconscious Robin. He was later beaten down after a team move with Chopper by a Gomu Gomu no Gatling Gun from Oars. Things were looking dire as the Straw Hats couldn't defeat the combo of Moira and Oars. Shortly after most crew members were defeated, Luffy showed up to save Usopp and Nami, after which Luffy began fighting Oars and Moira in his new form, Nightmare Luffy. Luffy managed to soon knock down Oars in his new form, but this still wasn't enough to defeat Oars. Luckily, the entire Straw Hat crew, including Brook, woke up shortly after Oars stood up once again and started taking Oars down once and for all. Sanji contributed by kicking the rudder chain of Thriller Bark around Oars so that they could straighten Oars' spine to the point that it wouldn't be able to withstand Luffy's gigant bazooka. After Luffy defeated Moira in his Shadow's Asgard form, which nearly cost Sanji and the other Shadowless people their lives had their shadows not returned to them, and subsequently passed out, Bartholomew Kuma appeared to kill the Straw Hats and the Thriller Bark Victims Association. Not even one of Sanji's kicks was able to damage Kuma due to the fact that he's a cyborg, which no one knew at the time. And so Kuma decided to give the group a choice, either die or surrender Luffy to him. After refusing, the group was knocked out cold by Kuma's Ursus shock. When the attack didn't knock Sanji out, he began to bargain with Kuma for Luffy's life to stop Zoro who was doing the same thing, knowing that Zoro's dream was far too important for him to just give up his life. However, after he asked Zoro to tell the crew to find a new cook, Zoro knocked him out. After the rest of the crew awakened, Sanji found a heavily wounded Zoro standing in the woods. After this, the crew and the Thriller Bark Victims Association prepared a party to celebrate their victory over Moira and his zombie army. Sanji learned from the Risky Brothers, who also witnessed what he and Zoro did to protect Luffy, that Zoro took in all of Luffy's pain and exhaustion from his fight with Moira. 
Sanji told them not to tell any of the Straw Hats this, even though Robin had spied on them without his knowledge. Brooke told Sanji that he also saw what happened, and asked him for a song request that Brooke would play on the piano, and then promptly ignored Sanji. When the Straw Hats prepared to sail away from Thriller Bark, Sanji was ecstatic to go to Merman Island so he could see the mermaids. So much, in fact, that when one of the Risky Bros told him that the mermaids don't wear panties, uh, he and Brooke got massive nosebleeds. But, like, of, of course they, they don't- they don't have legs. So, obviously they don't, right? Sabadi Archipelago Arc After leaving Thriller Bark, Sanji became more upbeat on their journey to Fishman Island, particularly considering the comments made by members of the Rolling Pirates about the existence of mermaids around that area. Sure enough, the chef was in heaven when the Straw Hats rescued one after arriving at the Red Line, but Kami immediately asked for the crew's help for the rescuing of her partner Hachan from the grip of slave trader Iron Mask Duval. Although Sanji initially believed this as a means to get on a mermaid's good side, this would turn into a personal nightmare. Upon arriving at the Flying Fish Rider's base to free Hachan, Sanji helped defeat the Flying Fish Raiders with the other Straw Hats before learning that Duval had a grudge against him because Duval looks exactly like Sanji's highly inaccurate wanted poster and his life was ruined by marines and bounty hunters trying to arrest him. Sanji then proceeded to run up to Duval and kick him in the face. Duval responded by having his flying fish riders capture Sanji in a metal net before diving underwater in an attempt to drown him. After Kami saved him, resulting in him getting a large nosebleed from his perversion, Sanji countered by attacking Duval with his face-rearranging kick combo to destroy the one thing at which he cannot stand looking, the face of his horrible wanted poster. The beating rendered Duval's face beautiful, ending his grudge against the Straw Hats and Duval now calling himself handsome. At this time, Sanji remained on the Thousand Sunny with Usopp and Frankie as the other Straw Hats go about on the Sabadi Archipelago. When he got a call from Chopper out in Sabadi Park that Kami had been kidnapped by Fishman slash Merman hunters, knowing that the only way to locate her in time was with experts from the human auction business because of the size of Sabadi Archipelago, Sanji decided to call in Duval's favor and the Flying Fish Riders to help find her, since they were former kidnappers themselves and would have an easier time locating the people who kidnapped Kami to find which human auction house she had been taken to. With the help of Duval and his newly named Rosie Life Riders group, they found that the human auction house at Grove One had Kami. Sanji then took part in the conflict Luffy initiated by attacking a world noble in the human auction house before the Straw Hats escaped on the Flying Fish. He also learned the truth about Gold Roger's execution from the Silver's Rayleigh when he regrouped in Shaggy's rip-off bar. Apparently, Roger gave himself up as opposed to the Marines' claim that Roger was captured. Roger contracted a serious illness which couldn't be cured, and spent three of his last four years traveling and eventually conquering the Grand Line. After being dubbed the King of the Pirates, Roger gained fame and fortune, although it didn't matter due to his impending death, so he disbanded his crew and surrendered himself to the Marines. While the Marines wanted to make an example of him, his lack of fear before his execution sparked the Great Pirate Age. After telling his story, Rayleigh decided to coat the Thousand Sunny free of charge, but said it would take three days. To make up for this, he said he would be going to a different location and gave everyone Vivra cards to find him. Zoro suggested they split up and regroup later to avoid capture due to the Admiral's arrival on the archipelago, while Sanji knows it's an ironic statement from him. As the Straw Hats departed, they said farewell to Shaki, Kami, Papag, and Hachan as they decided to split up, only to be confronted by a soldier who appears to be Bartholomew Kuma. The Straw Hats battled with the cyborg who could fire beams out of his hands as well as his mouth. Sanji noted that while they last encountered Kuma when they were worn out, now they're at full strength as Luffy activates second gear. Sanji, Zoro, and Luffy land a combo called Gomu Gobo no Diable Moten Jet 600 Pound Cannon to slow Kuma down momentarily. Zoro noted that their opponent may not even be the real Kuma as he didn't demonstrate any of his Niku Niku no Mi abilities thus far and instead a replica pacifista. This presented a problem because it meant there was more than one with Kuma's level of strength. After much intense fighting, the Straw Hats finally managed to do significant damage on the Kuma clone and the monster trio delivered their finishing blows to it. Sanji used the Diablo Jamba flambage shot to give it serious damage as Zoro activated his Asura technique to use his Asura Makusen right before Luffy activated third gear and finished it off with a Gomu Gomu no Gigant Rifle. As they rested, they contemplated on how such a powerful opponent could appear right so early when they were waiting for the ship to be coated. Sanji got up and noticed the Kuma clone has PX4 written on its neck. But before he could work out what it meant, a broadaxe-wielding warrior named Sentomaru appeared and ordered a pacifista entitled PX1 to capture them. Seeing little choice, the Straw Hats chose flight instead of fight, and Sanji, Nami, and Frankie ran together. 
However, PX-1 ambushed them as Kizaru, one of the three admirals, appeared and attempted to kill Zoro, who was exhausted from the previous battle against Orz and Kuma, and was still nursing injuries sustained during the events at Thriller Bark. However, Kizaru's attack was deflected by Silver's Rayleigh. After the two engaged in small talk, Luffy ordered his crew to escape, as in their current state, they couldn't hope to match either Kizaru Sentomaru or another pacifista. Kizaru attempted to come after Usopp, Zoro, and Brook, but Rayleigh confronted him again, this time using his sword. Seeing them in danger from PX-1, Sanji ran back, telling Frankie to protect Nami and kicked the pacifista as hard as he could, and narrowly avoiding his laser beam. However, PX-1 made a direct hit on Sanji and left him unconscious. He awakened just as the real Kuma appeared and vanished Zoro. He was later vanished himself when he tried to attack the real Kuma. Straw Hat Separation Adventure, Kamabaka Kingdom Because of Kuma's power, Sanji landed on Momoiro Island in Kamabaka Kingdom, where the land is pink and occupied by transvestites, both animals and humans. Sanji was seen running away in horror from a group pursuing him, asking him if he was one of them. They chased him across the beach and through the castle. Later, it appeared that somehow they caught up to Sanji and forced him into being one of them. Sanji is then seen in a frilly dress, a curly wig, high-heeled shoes, and thick makeup, frolicking with them. The veins on his head and arm suggested that this may or may not have been against his will. Post-War Arc Sanji was seen again back to his old self when trying to convince Ivankov that he was part of Luffy's crew. Ivankov didn't believe Sanji because of his badly drawn wanted poster. Ivankov also declared that he would refuse to tell Sanji anything about Luffy since there was the slightest chance of him being a spy for the government and the marines. When Sanji was exhausted from his tense conversation, one of the Okamas urged someone to put a dress on Sanji again. Sanji responded by giving the Okama audience an angry glare. The Okamas gave Sanji a thumbs down when he declared that he will not put on a dress again and that he is a manly man who loves ladies. Sanji then battled Ivankov for a boat, but did not prevail. Ivankov then handed Sanji a newspaper, since the news of Luffy had already been made public. When Sanji read the newspaper, he found something quite interesting about Luffy in the article. Ivankov then asked Sanji what he found in the article, but Sanji wouldn't answer, much to Iva's annoyance. After Sanji realized that the attack cuisine of Kamabaka Kingdom had enhancing properties, he asked Iva to give him the recipe, hoping to use it on his crewmates. Iva bluntly said no to Sanji's request, and gave the cook a challenge to earn the recipe. He said that since Sanji refused to learn the Nukama Kenpo, the cook had to travel around the island and defeat the 99 masters of the Nukama Kenpo. Each time he beat one of them, he would claim one of the 99 attack cuisine recipes. The catch was that the island's inhabitants would pursue him non-stop and try to dress him up again. If he won, Ivankov would grant all of his wishes, including giving him a ship. And if he lost, there was no guarantee that Sanji would keep his, uh, manhood. Knowing that he couldn't meet up with Luffy again with his current fighting skills, Sanji accepted the challenge, saying that it would make him stronger. Of course, the story continues, but that's part one of the life of Sanji. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out our other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.